My name is Corbett O'Toole. I'm 70 years old. I use a wheelchair full time. Everybody's saying, oh, go, you know, there are these senior housing. And I would look at these apartments and I'd see people go into them in these studio apartments. And I thought, no. I kept feeling like all I wanted to do was be by water and trees. I just wanted to be in nature. And I decided to become a nomad. And I started on the road, and about two days in, I realized I haven't driven in 17 years. You know, somebody said to me before I went on the road, you know, it's going to be 1950 out there, meaning that there is no such thing as disability law. Nobody cares, and nobody, you're not supposed to be on the road, so there's going to be no accessibility. And really, I found that, unfortunately, to be true. And the attitude is really like... There's so much, the, the messaging in so many nomad circles is, I can only be on the road if I'm very able-bodied, if I'm very healthy. We're not nomads because we want to be on sticks and bricks. We're nomads because we want to be out in nature, exploring the world, being in these environments. And, um, and I just really feel like part of what, you know, I, I come from a long history of disability activism, and I feel like part of my being on the road is just saying, People like me belong on the road. You know, just because I'm in a wheelchair doesn't mean I don't belong on the road. And y'all are just gonna have to get used to it. And and because if you look around, there's almost no YouTube videos of anybody on the road by themselves in a wheelchair. So some nomads said, if you come to us, we'll make this work for you. Let's <laughs> I was with a group and we were camping and the ground was so sandy I literally couldn't move even a foot. So they're like, okay, at the campfire, you're now the windbreak. I'm like, I am? And they're like, yes, we're putting the campfire on your driver's side. So you're gonna sit and then you can talk to everybody. Everybody can talk to you and you'll be part of it. And that's the way we did it. We just made it work. I have to go to Mexico to get a bunch of dental, dental work done. And I, the person who's supposed to go with me across the border, cause I have to, I'm having surgery and I have to have a person with me, fell through. And I literally just started texting nomads and saying that I knew from the women's groups, I'm in a jam. I can't find anybody. My person fell through. Can you help? And people within 24 hours, somebody I had never met before said, I'll do that. <laughs> and like, that's the kind of thing, like there's a safety net for you. And there's also protocols. Like, where do I sleep at night? There are apps. The information's out there. It's really just a matter of getting plugged in and finding it. And also knowing that you're not alone that there's other nomads around. In fact, there's a nomad Facebook group that's basically like nomad emergencies. You know, it's like 911 for nomads. You go, help! And they're like, okay, we'll send somebody or they'll tell you how to fix something or what, you know, is the mechanic lying to you or not. For me, I kept saying, where's my happy place? And my happy place was being in nature. And a van got me to nature and sitting in nature and right now I'm surrounded by cacti and I saw a couple of golden eagles the other day and hummingbirds and like that's my happy place you know what your happy place is it might be museums it might be driving it might be whatever your happy place is just build your system around that and just keep your eye on the prize keep going to your happy place the obstacles will come and go and your happy place will be there the whole time so I thought that when I was in Sticks and Bricks, I had to move into like one of those teeny tiny senior housing things. And it wasn't about how much, how small the space was. It wasn't a space that I could dream in. I need to be out here. 
My dreams happen when I'm sitting in nature. That's when I can write. That's when I can think. That's when I can feel the divine. And, you know, we got to dream big. We owe it to ourselves to dream big. So just dream big. The fears will come and go. That's okay. So, you, so sometimes I cry myself to sleep. Oh, I wish it was different. You know what? The next day, the next morning, I'm getting ready to go on the freeway overpass on my long drive across country. What happens? An owl. An owl flies right in front of me. And I think, thank you. You'll be okay. And you're not alone. See you down the road. Thank <laughs> you.